Hey there, CPO here, and it's kind of rainy and miserable outside, but a great day to do some work on the Jeep. So today I'm installing the Trail Force HD bumper from Barricade, and I got the one with the tire carrier. So you're going to see me remove my existing tire carrier and factory bumper, and then uh, I'll show you a little bit about this Barricade bumper, and we'll get it installed. And hopefully it will help those of you who are interested in tackling this project on your own or just want more information about this particular bumper. So there's just a few things that I wanted to cover with you right up front before we even start the install. First of all, the bumper's gonna come to you in two different packages, so expect that. If you get the tire carrier, uh, the big triangular part of the tire carrier is gonna come separately. Uh, so you'll expect two big heavy boxes, um, probably completely destroyed by UPS. Um, not their fault, not Extreme Terrain's fault, not Barricade's fault, it just always seems to happen. <laughs> um, Secondly, uh, there's no instructions with this bumper, but that's okay because you're watching this video and I'm going to cover everything you need to know. Uh, thirdly, uh, there is no brake light uh, consideration for relocating your uh, third brake light. So um, I have an aftermarket uh, spare tire carrier that does provide for an extended brake light mount. I'm going to take that off when I put on the barricade uh, bumper and tire carrier. And that means I'm going to have to figure out what to do with my third brake light. I may not solve that in this video, um, but just know that if you are moving to this option, you're going to need to figure out what to do with your third brake light. And that, that's common with almost every bumper and tire carrier combo. Uh, it just so happens that um, I already have adjusted that and I'm going to remove that now to put this bumper on. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do. Uh, and finally, if you have a tow hitch on your uh, JK currently, um, and you're getting the barricade bumper. The barricade bumper does have a hitch receiver. The problem is a lot of people struggle with the fact that it's not tow rated. You know, I do have a tow rated class three uh, hitch on my JK. I'm going to remove that and put on a bumper with a non tow rated um, hitch. That's fine for me because I really only plan on using it for accessories anyway. I don't expect to tow anything. And if I do, it's going to be a lightweight trailer. Lots of people tow uh, with the barricade bumper uh, the way it is have no problems. Uh, there's not going to be any place to hook your uh, safety chains, so you'll have to figure out that solution, which is usually what catches everybody's attention when they're like, hey, how come I don't have any you know, places to hook my chains? Oh, I'm not supposed to tow with it. Well, they're never going to tell you it's okay to tow with it because then they assume liability if something happens. It is you know, the world we live in. Um, but I did look at the bumper, and I'll show you in comparison with the actual uh, tow rated uh, class 3 hitch that I have on the JK now that I'm going to remove. I'll let you make your own decision on what you think is the best way to do. There's two options really. You remove the old one, put on the barricade with the uh, non-tow rated, or you cut off the barricade uh, tow receiver and then make sure that it fits around the existing one and then you have your stock uh, JK one and you have uh, a hole uh, to accommodate that in the bumper. That seems like a lot of work for me and I looked at it and uh, quite frankly, I'm gonna leave it on there because it looks pretty darn robust and uses the same frame mounting holes that the tow rated uh, hitch uses. Anyway, I spent way too much time talking about this, but I wanted to hit you with those things right up front because uh, they may influence your decision on what you purchase um, or what accessories you need to obtain along with your purchase. Let's get to removing this uh, previous tire carrier and bumper. All right, like I said, I've got an aftermarket. Uh, this is a Smitty built tire carrier. Um, if you've got the stock tire carrier, you'll see something similar and you'll see very clearly all of the bolts you need to remove to take that off. By the way, this CB antenna location sucks. Don't do it. Um, I installed it here when I put on this aftermarket tire carrier and my, <laughs> my SWR readings are ridiculous. So I haven't even used this uh, since I tested it and I was just really waiting to get the new bumper before I figured out where next I was gonna install it. So anyway, if you see this and you think, oh, look where CPO has his, don't do it. Uh, that is not a good spot. Too much interference, there's metal here, there's metal here. I don't, even, I don't even know why I tried. It does not work. Before you completely remove this, make sure you disconnect this third brake light, whatever that requires for your setup. Otherwise, you're gonna be tethered by a wire um, and you don't want that to happen. There you go. So you can decide what you want to do here. A lot of guys will put a cover over this. 
um, or not, completely up to you. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and put my factory bolts back in just to hold on to them where they're at. Uh, and then, of course, I've still got to figure out what to do with my third brake light, so that may come into play again. But for now, at least I've got the, uh, the old tire carrier off. All right, we're looking underneath here. This is the receiver uh, hitch. This is the rear uh, frame piece, and you can see um, this hitch, one, two, three, four uh, bolts across the back of this to hold the hitch on. It's up to you if you remove the hitch uh, before you remove the bumper or remove the bumper uh, first. The bumper is not connected to the receiver at all. So I'm going to remove the bumper first, and then we'll see what's left with this receiver. So for the rear bumper, you've got two basically connection points on each side of the vehicle. This is the driver's side uh, rear. This is the rear tow hook. Um, and then the, the frame rail. Uh, you've got a bracket here that connects your bumper. And then you've got a bracket right here. Um, this is a, uh, the, the tow uh, harness. Uh, but there's a bracket here with a couple of bolts. So it's just like this on the other side. So we're going to remove um, these brackets and then that will free off the bumper. It's really up to you whether or not you want to remove the, uh, the bumper from the bracket or the bracket with the bumper from the frame. I'm going to do the uh, removing it from the frame. That way I can remove the bracket and the bumper as one assembly. This is a 16 millimeter bolt. Once you get them loose, they uh, come off pretty quick. You can see that that's loose now. On this inside one, I'm removing the bolt to the bumper. Just because I think it's gonna be more of a puzzle to try and work it off uh, from the frame first. So there's that. And then now the whole, basically, driver side is loose. Uh, and I'm going to do what I always do, which is for safety, I'm going to thread one in, just a couple threads, so that that doesn't fall off when I undo the other side. All right, I'm leaving one of these in place until I'm ready to pull it off. And then just like before, I'm pulling the bolt out of the bumper on this one, not the frame. All right, now the whole thing is loose, held together lightly by those two uh, bolts I didn't take out yet. All right, one side's off. And now the other. Because I left those uh, two inner ones connected to the frame to remove from the bumper, there's kind of a little shelf for them. Plus I've got the uh, hitch here. Just like that, pretty easy. Hopefully this will help you see how it's connected. These are the ones I disconnected from the frame sides. These are the ones I disconnected uh, from the, uh, the bumper side. So now you can see this is the other brackets uh, that uh, there's another bolt there. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to remove these. They actually may not be in the way at all with the new bumper. So I'm going to leave them there for now and see. You can also see here now how the, uh, the receiver is mounted. There's these four bolts. And when I show you the barricade bumper, uh, you'll see that it'll use the same connection points uh, to secure uh, and reinforce that receiver hitch. This is a uh, 19 millimeter. And there's three of those. And there is this bad boy here. It's like a 20 some odd, uh, but you don't actually have to take that one apart. There's that, and then there's this bracket inside. And now we remove the factory receiver. Let's 
this is kind of tedious because you've got the muffler here. But everything comes out. And this is just sort of press fit up into there. Looks like that. There you go. All right, so here's our JK with no rear bumper. Pretty easy. Uh, three bolts on each side for a total of six to remove the bumper. You have four bolts to remove the tow hitch and then three here to remove the tow hook. So uh, now we're ready to start taking a look at the barricade bumper. All right, so this is the barricade trail force bumper. Uh, got it from Extreme Terrain. This one does include the tire carrier, which is gonna connect right here. Comes with the D-rings. And you can see how the back uh, mounts. Took a little bit of a beating from UPS. Actually, this piece was sticking out of the box, uh, but that's okay because uh, that's not anything that's gonna be visible. Now I want you to take a look at the receiver. This is the back side. You can see how it uses the same four bolts of the factory receiver that I pulled off. And, uh, you know, I, I think the mounting is going to be pretty solid uh, as far as, you know, the ability to tow. They're never going to tell you it's okay to tow. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's okay to tow. But um, you make a decision on what you think uh, makes the most sense. The welds aren't bad. I mean, they're, they're not great, but um, they're sufficient, right? So they're not pretty, but they're effective. And I think it's going to hold up just fine. Uh, and then you can see here you've got two holes on each side to secure to the frame, plus all of these four holes to secure to the frame, which is quite a bit more than what your factory bumper had uh, as far as connection to the frame. Of course, the factory bumper is there just for looks, not to actually use this one. Uh, has some utility. All right, let's get this bad boy installed. So here's the hardware we're going to use to install this. So on each side of the frame here, you're just going to slip this in here, and these holes are going to be uh, allow access to these captured nuts. Do that on each side. For each side, you're gonna use two of these smaller bolts. They're gonna screw into this bracket that we set into the frame, right? And then with that is gonna be a lock washer and a flat washer. And if you got a helper around, now's the time to get some help. I'm gonna go get my son, have him hold that bumper in place while I start those bolts. Can you just lift it? Alright, so now that I've got the four outer bolts on and loose, I can now move to taking care of the inner bolts. Alright, so now that we're under here, I've got this flat plate. It's going to go here. It's going to further reinforce this connection, uh, particularly where the, uh, the tow receiver is going to be. And what's going to happen is... Uh, I've got a washer and the bolt. It's going to go through the plate, through the frame, out the other side, and then on the back side I'll have another washer and this uh, lock nut. Okay. I'm going to want to push up on the bumper. So I can get through the hole on the uh, on the bumper, and then I'm going to put the washer and a lock nut. 
just getting it started. And so you'll notice, right, the key to this is not tightening anything down until you have everything in place. I'll work on the two inside ones. Might have to really push up to get that one started. So now that I've got everything started, uh, I can go through and tighten everything down. I'm gonna tighten down these four on the inside first and then move to the outside. So as we tighten things down, we wanna get the bumper properly aligned. All right, and how I'm gonna do this is a floor jack and a block of wood. And basically, I know that this side needs to come up a little bit. And as I put some pressure on this, it not only raises that side, but lowers the other side. Now I'm looking for a fairly consistent gap between the bottom of the tailgate. I think that's good there. So while that's Jack is holding that in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the four bolts underneath. All right, now I can move to these side bolts. And the bumper's now perfectly aligned with the bottom of the tailgate. Bumpers by design have adjustability built into them, and I think a lot of people forget that they need to align them with the vehicle. That's it for the bumper install. So um, I have a tire carrier put on, and uh, but if you bought the bumper without the tire carrier, you are done. You might want to try and figure out if you have a wiring harness or a hitch. How to make that accessible, you can get creative there. Um, that's it, that's a bumper install. Now we move to the tire carrier.